<laughs> so there's always talk that, you know, people that cover sports were because they couldn't play sports. So we just thought we'd throw in a, just a little bit of little, something. A little something. nugget? Little yeah, nugget a little bit of something something. Did you want the gloves? I don't need gloves for you. You just... subscribe now so thank you for everybody that joined us for uh, the live Sunday drive uh, you will see Saturday morning uh, content live content coming from us uh, on our on, on our affiliate sportscaster uh, the link will be in the description for sportscaster uh, that's gonna start in July is when we're gonna start doing those broadcasts thanks for the Sign language, Mario, you while you it. eat your everything bagel with cream cheese. Did they put any cream cheese on that bagel? I took half of it off. Oh, you did? Okay. Because I wanted a bagel with cream cheese, not cream cheese with a bagel. <laughs> I understand that. All right, here we go. So, Tim Ellington uh, says, uh, I would like more deta- a more detailed explanation of what people are talking about when they say Ed Oliver's talents better fit the Bills' defense than they did in college. I think that's a little underplayed, right? Because... We talk about the ta- how talented Ed Oliver is. He's, you know, it was, it's in my opinion, it was the perfect fit for Buffalo, right? The perfect pick for the Bills. Couldn't have been any better. Okay, I'm listening. However, it is a fair point to bring up that while he played on the defensive line in college, yes, what the Bills are going to ask him to do is worldly different than than the tape that he put in college. So the Bills drafted him off of like an 18% snap count when he wasn't playing nose. Ed Oliver is not a nose tackle, right? So the Bills drafted him off of the assumption that they feel like he could play in this technique. Now, let's talk. I'm going to make a comparison to a player that we've gone to a couple times, and it's going back a little ways, but it's Manny Lawson. Because Manny Lawson was a defensive end with Mario Williams. First round pick. Right. He was a first round pick and he was drafted to do what? Play not play back. defensive and not play defensive end. They put him in outside they put it they drafted like him and put him in as an outside linebacker. Well yeah, he was crazy at NC State. Crazy speed, right? But very much like Clowney in the fact that he Clowney's was Clowney's like two eighty though, isn't he? Clowney was a little bit heavier but similar similar speed pro, oh. similar speed profile. Okay. But um Clowney, they didn't put an outside linebacker, right? No. They move him all over the place. Uh-huh. But his job's to pass rush. Yes. Manny Lawson, they said, here's this really talented guy. He, play, he plays defensive end. I think we can teach him to play outside linebacker. The whole, I think he can do it, is a little problematic. Tim wants a little bit more of a detailed explanation um, on how Oliver in college will be different than Oliver in Buffalo and what that really means. Because I think it's a fair conversation to have. So you're telling me. Uh-oh, here we go. There's literally nothing... You never has a, have a positive thing to say when the sentence starts with, so you're telling me. Continue. So what you're telling me is that the Buffalo Bills effectively and consciously drafted a guy out of position <laughs> yeah. and are going to put him in a different position. Yeah. What you tell me is the biggest no-no. Wait, you're going to draft a guy and put him here? You're going to draft a tackle and put him at guard? You're going to draft a guard and put him at tackle? You're going to draft <laughs> it's this? It's not the same thing. No, no, no. It's Why? Not the same thing. Why? Why? Not the same. You're playing. Now, <clears throat> you're telling. <clears throat> I'm going I'm to fight you. Because this is going to happen. <laughs> you're telling me that a guy who played in a. This is vibe. I'm getting heated now. Uh, you're telling me a guy that played primarily a zero technique which is a 3-4, which means you have to control two gaps yourself. Yep. Now you're going to put him in a three technique. You're going to be one, one-on-one with the guard. You know, you're saying because you made life easier for him, he's going to be more effective now in this defense. I'm just saying that the Bills drafted a player to play a position and a style that he didn't play in college. Well, no, I shouldn't say he didn't. He played, however, 
they didn't give him the opportunity to do it frequently. So it was very, very, very little film. I'm sorry. Are you speaking of this year they did that or last year they did that? Are you talking about Edmonds or Oliver now? I keep getting confused. No, no, no. Because you just said, rewind the tape. I'm just saying that the Bills drafted a player to play a position and a style that he didn't play in college. You think they can coach him up? They think they can coach him up. (laughs) Right? They think they can do it. I love it. But I want to talk about the differences between playing a zero technique and a three technique. Because to some some players wouldn't be able to make that transition. And and let's be real. Oliver is a, is way too small for a typical NFL nose tackle. He'd have to put on like 50 pounds to be a nose tackle. I think what, what, what else we need to say is, and I'll let you get back to your point. What else we need to say is that we're not saying that it's easier to play a three technique versus a, a, a zero technique right. as a nose. We're just saying it's different, right? It's gonna yeah. be, it's gonna be, he's gonna be asked to do different visually, it's complete a different, different look. yeah, visually complete it's different, a different look. responsibilities. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, could you liken it to right tackle, left tackle? Visually, it's different. Yeah, yeah. You're still asked. You're still asked. Yeah, you're still playing. You're still playing tackle. You're still playing the offensive line, um, but you're you're asked to just do things a little different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The way that you see a play different, break down is easier. not the same. Yeah. Right. Different, not easier. Right. So. What we saw from Oliver from a pre-draft process was a thin at Oliver, trying to show how how quick and explosive he was, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And my initial thought was he was trying to show people he could play defensive end. No doubt. Right? No because doubt. he wanted to make himself as valuable as possible to as many teams as possible. And in a 3-4 system, at Oliver can play outside because he's not playing nose, right? So no. he became attracted to every NFL team because of his speed and explosiveness. That is a fact. There's very few teams that would think that Ed Oliver, unless you're the Oakland Raiders, was not one of the best defensive players in this draft, right? I don't know. That Clemson D-line was pretty disgusting. It was, but Cleveland Farrell was not worth fourth over- the fourth overall pick. Oliver is quick and explosive, right? Mm-hmm. It looks like he can play three technique. It does. Because it looks like he can. Yeah. But we don't really know. There's, you said there's, the there's some, that he there's did. some tape out there where he's playing it, and he is he looks very dominant. He yeah. really does. He looks very dominant yeah. playing so in a three technique. You have to figure out that the competition that he was playing against while he was playing in the three technique. Mm-hmm. You know what's going on with those guys. Uh, but here's the deal. I'll give you an example, right? Mm-hmm. I think this is similar to, um, let's say, Ty Montgomery from Green Bay. I, I think this is similar to Ty Montgomery. Whereas Montgomery was a wide receiver, okay. different responsibilities. Yes, had some snaps at running back. Right. Okay. Let's say this was in college. Right. Would Ty Montgomery have been drafted as a wide receiver or a running back in the season where he moved to running back? What would teams have done? Would they drafted him as a wide receiver or a running back? So that season where Ty Montgomery was at a wideout, they Green Bay got rashed with running back injuries, and Ty Montgomery moved to running back. And it was just supposed to be a short-term deal. It didn't. Would if that was in college, would Ty Montgomery have been drafted as a wide receiver or a running back? I think having a running back that can catch is more valuable than having a wide receiver that can put in the backfield. Okay, right. Uh, so, so you're he, saying he would have been he, drafted as running back? He would have been drafted higher. I don't know as what. He just would have been drafted higher than what he was because okay. he would have shown his versatility right. in that respect. Right. You're not a top ten. Wide receiver, right. however, you may be a top eight I, running back mm-hmm. because you can catch the ball and do things that we like. Right. We can come out in a three wide set and then motion you out to go doubles. Right, that's right. amazing. I agree with that. Okay. I agree with you there. I think not to say that Ed Oliver isn't an elite talent because he is, but I think his versatility is what made him so valuable. So the the, the way that him losing all that. Not all that way, but he lost weight to try to show he could play outside. Right. Did he try to drive that point home instead of try to put on weight to say, hey, listen, there are more 4 3 than 3 4s mm-hmm. in, in, in the league right now that are drafting higher. Right. Maybe I want to do this. Maybe I want to do that. Maybe I want to show them that I, ha- I am versatile, that I'm not just a zero technique. And that's what I was just asked to play, which tells you the fact is he had to know mm-hmm. that 
playing in a zero technique is not very glamorous. No. So he was still playing his responsibility, so that tells you he's a team guy. Well, also, there aren't that many three fours. How many nose jobs are there really out there? Those, nose uh, jobs? Well, okay. How many right? But there's probably as many nose tackles as Michael Jackson had noses right now in the NFL. Really, true. when you look at three fours, that's that's Didn't probably Didn't Aloniata just retire? He did, yeah. Okay. But, so, but that's exactly that's it. Once you get I a good remember. nose tackle, they stay forever. They do. because you, you, you They can't. last forever. They, uh, just like just like a, an elite, a left tackle will cover up a guard. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, a nose tackle will cover up subpar linebacker play. Yep. Because he's playing two gaps himself. Right. My concern about Oliver this season, because even though it's going to be a different look from a zero technique where you're taking on two guys to a three technique where the goal is to only take on one. He's got, right? He's got to do that side. Yeah. Right, exactly. The goal is to only take on one. My concern is his weight and his body. Right? Not, because these guys just go full on, full bore, nonstop. He was weight controlling before the draft. Now he's going to try and put on weight. I'm a little worried about burnup. I think people are expecting Ed Oliver to come in and change the way that the Bills are going to play defense and be a generational player. And while he may be that someday, I think it's a I think it's a little in the stars for people to think that Ed Oliver is going to. It's this isn't the NBA. There's not eight guys on the roster, yeah. right? This is the NFL. There's 11 <laughs> guys on the defense. It's harder for a rookie to make an impact on an NFL defense than it is for a rookie drafted. NBA player to make an impact on his team on offense or defense. Well, it's it's apples and oranges, man. Right. But I think there I think those two lines get crossed because you expect a top ten player to make an immediate impact. And while he may make an impact, he's gonna be playing forty five percent of the snaps. That's why I think he won't burn out. So that so you think so that's part of the equation. Yeah, I think I think the fact that he's going to be on such a rotation. Now if you're telling me that Ed Oliver is going to go in and he's gonna play eighty percent of the snaps at a three technique majority of the year, by the twelfth week he's done. Yeah. He just stick a fork in it because <clears throat> his weight might drop. Yeah. By that time. That's what I'm that's so, what I'm saying. So that's what, what I'm, I'm saying is about. by the fact that he's now he's on a regimen. Listen, you're gonna be a three technique. We've got to keep your weight here. This is your diet plan. This is what we're gonna put you on. This is what you're gonna do. You're only gonna be playing 55, 60, maybe 60% of the snaps. Right. Okay. That'll still keep him fresh right. throughout the year. And that's why I think defenders in that respect, because what's the number one position we talk about all the time? Running backs. They mm-hmm. burn out so fast when they're overused in their rookie season. Right. Leonard Fournette. Perfect Who, example. Who's the guy? I mean, even Elliott. Even yeah. Elliott, he started to die down a little bit. I don't know. Saquon Barkley's a mutant. He I don't is. know why he didn't tire out yep. near the end he of the is. year. That guy is the exception, not the rule. Right. But, I mean, you take a look at even Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt was used. Yes. He, he was, was beat burned up. to the ground his rookie season. That's why guys <clears throat> that have the foresight to see that that, that, that could happen, such as a Sean uh, Payton. He with didn't put Kamara Mark. in until the fifth, sixth week. Yep. Like, yeah, listen, wait. Wait till we get a nice off season with you. We're able to regulate everything. Everything's not coming at well, you. You give, this, you give these kids bodies a break a little bit, too. Mm-hmm. And what did Kamara come in in his sophomore year? He was a monster. Yep. Uh, McCaffrey, same yep. deal. He didn't play right away. Nope, sure didn't. So, by doing that, you give them time to learn the offense, and then eventually it gets their bodies right. I'm defensively though, mm-hmm. I think because he's been in the trenches, and that's used, he's used to doing that. Mm-hmm. The fact that you're gonna, he's not gonna be playing as much. Do you think it's gonna make him more explosive? I think it's gonna make him more explosive because. Um, now that's interesting. He, 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 you're not, you're not, you're not wearing him down. Right. Eighty percent of the snaps. I don't know how many he played in college. Let's say eighty percent of the snaps he played at Houston. He played a massive. Number okay, of snaps. let's just say it's eighty-five. Yeah. You go from playing eighty-five percent of the snaps at Houston to playing eighty-five percent of the snaps in the NFL. You're going to be beat up. Yeah. A little bit more because it's just that's how it is. If you go from playing eighty-five to playing fifty-five to sixty, you're going to be fresher, mm-hmm. which means you're going to have more gas in the tank, which means you're going to be able to go hard more because there's probably plays that. Oh man! They've been oh yeah, you're walking through. Drive, yeah, you're you know walking I mean? through some of that. So, sure. Uh, I'm not saying that's the type of players. I'm just saying that happens with every play. I'm exhausted. Yeah. I'm just gonna hold my gap this this play. Right. All right. They're passing. All right, sweet. <laughs> 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 They're not not a run. I don't have to stop the guy. No. Um, but that's that's some of the things that will go into it. I'm not saying that he's gonna be, because after week one, 
No one's 100%. No. Oh, I agree with that. So I'm saying like, but I'm just saying you're not going to see the burnout in week 13. I, I think he'll still be pretty productive. I'm enticed by Ed Oliver's rookie season to see what it looks like, right? I'm very enticed. I'm anxious to see what that looks like. I'm excited about year two of Ed Oliver. I'm more excited about next year with Ed Oliver than I am this season. Hmm, really? Yeah, because I think there's a bit of a learning curve when it comes to asking God to play a role that he didn't play in college, right? It, the game does move at a different speed. You're talking about professional athletes, not college athletes, so mm-hmm. it is different. But I also think we're going to see him on a limited snap count. Yeah. He's going to be on a pitch count. Yeah. I mean, that's... And I think sometimes we get really excited about things as fans, and we forget the fact that on this defense, there's no stud across the defensive line that's out there 85% of the snaps. There's not a single one. You're not paying Jerry to do it. You're not paying Starr to do it. You're not getting... No. Jordan Phillips isn't doing it. Oliver is not going to be the exception. You are not putting Oliver in 75% of snaps when you're only playing Jerry 52% of snaps. It's not... That's not going to happen. I do have to disagree somewhat okay on your pitch count okay i think in the third year of this defense and how they rotate they already do that yeah i think you're already on it not technically a, they're not going to say oh he played 50 he played 27 snaps this game we're going to sit down for the rest of the day right i think just by naturally them doing the rotation that they sure. do it'll be that way sure yeah and yeah. if they have a couple of blowouts hey take sit a down. rest you know, take a rest we're gonna put we're gonna put some other guys in we're gonna watch it if they do, I'm just saying. Either or, if they're getting blown out, they're not going to keep him in. I'm really curious to see what they do in New England with him early because if they bounce him to end a couple times, that's going to be something that New England didn't see, right? So you move Zoe inside, you move Oliver to the outside, and give that look. I don't care what they do, but for that week... I'm putting Adrian Waddle in the defensive line room all week. Oh God, yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, all right. I need a dossier on these eight players. Yeah. 